Australia Productions, in association with Soul Drifter Studios and their affiliates, presents The Martian Broadcast, an audio drama based on the true story of the infamous 1938 radio broadcast that shook the nation with fear. Previously on The Martian Broadcast. What is CBS interested in this time? With Halloween around the corner, maybe something spooky for the kids. I have it, John. A Halloween show. War of the Worlds. No one knows how to do this damned War of the Worlds. We can't save these ships without a second captain. And here I am wondering where the first is. The book's no good, Mr. Houseman. It, it, it just can't be done. We need your help, Houseman. Fine, I'll be there soon. It's going to be a long night. This is episode three. Tired of War. Wednesday morning, and I can tell the rest of them never went to bed. Things never run smooth around here, but this, this is different. The air is tense, and just gets worse when Orson and Houseman walk into a room. It's getting difficult to be around, but the truth is, if anything is going to get done today, they just need to hash out whatever bedroom drama they have. Are they done yet? I can't tell. Pipe down for a bit. Quality, literate work. Fine pieces. You and your fine pieces may need to find a better piece soon enough. This is the kind of trek we keep churning out. You are not understanding what I'm saying. It's Wednesday. Taylor wanted the script yesterday. Now he's on his way here. What did you honestly expect? I expected good work, but this isn't it. Well, here he comes. Of course you would drive a monstrosity like that. What are we going to give him? Anything else. Good morning, gentlemen. Or should I say good night? Running that midnight oil, it seems. In our case, it's midnight scotch. But it all burns the same. How are you doing, Taylor? Not bad. Everyone's excited for the Halloween show. Advertisers are already lining up. Oh? Do tell. Keep it under your hats. But we have some people interested from Campbell. The soup. You bet. That's exciting. Right, Orson? Thrilling. Well, it all hinges on the show, I think. Speaking of, do you have the script for the Dusk Boys? Of course. It's here. And with just a few final touches needed. Excuse me for a moment. Funny guy, that Wells. That's a word, all right. What do you all have cooking besides this? A play at the theater. Hmm. Got any extra tickets? No. We pre-sold them all. Sorry. Ah, it's all right. It's an Orson Welles. It'll be so good they'll run it for months. Plenty of time for me to see. Here, Davidson, the script for the Halloween show. Hot off the presses, huh? Not even time to bind it. Ghosts and goblins? Better. That's what I like to hear. (laughs) Keep up the good work. Looking forward to the show. What did you give him? Something good enough for the soup suckers. Is it good enough for you? It will be when we start anew. Come again? The script is good enough to appease CBS, but we can do better. We must. That script was nothing but a sad attempt at being good. Due to our sad attempt of a leader. Please, don't let me stop you from speaking your mind. You gallivant all around town, Orson, performing for audiences far and wide. When you're here, your mind is there, and vice versa. You are being pulled apart, and we are the ones that are suffering. Well, I do apologize that my eagerness to perform and create has led to your suffering. How dare I? How dare you indeed? You want a show so bad? Stick around. Work with us. I'm a general fighting a war on two fronts. And I'm trusting that those I've left in command on the winning front, these little radio shows, can execute what we must, when we must. Have you failed me yet? No. And have I truly failed you? Or is it your suffering that makes you feel so victimized? Oh, Orson, I swear to God. Whoops. I'll come back later. Well? Your guess is as good as mine, but we all heard the start anew. Look, I've got plenty of other work to do. You know, somewhere else where they appreciate my efforts? I'm sure they'll come to an agreement. Sure. Just like stray cats and junkyard dogs do. I'm gonna pack up. What do you think is gonna happen? That's not my department, kiddo. They don't pay us to think around here. No, Koch certainly doesn't. You know, I wrote half that script Orson just gave away. I don't doubt it. 
That's why I'm sound. That way, I'm always heard. Should we get back to work? We've now only got four days to pull a show out of our socks. <sighs> that was a whole night's worth of work. Ungrateful bastard. Trouble in paradise. Paradise lost. Apparently the fruit of our labors isn't sweet enough. The next time you wish to eavesdrop, I recommend opening a window. The hot air coming out of that boy rises, after all. So, what now? We, at least, trying to keep to schedule. Record what we can, and present it to him later. On a silver platter, with bells on too? Record what? Davidson has the only script. Well, you're smart, ain't you? Now why don't you go whip up a few pages? And what are you going to do? Stand there and look pretty? I'll do some writing. Good, then I can do your drinking. Does anyone else want anything before we get back to work? I think we'll be all right. Thank you. Mm, let's uh, get back to it then. She's one of the hardest workers here, you know. If that girl was brash and insufferable, she could give Orson a run for his youthful money. You worried? Worried? She's Koch's assistant. That's not what I meant. Aura. Say no more. My lips are tight. But you may want to stay out of Orson's bed for a while. Impossible. We've got two shows and contracts signed. I made this bed. Well, then you better lie in it and get some rest. Because we're not going to put up with this much longer if we keep feeling underappreciated. You should have heard them all while you two were bickering like bums. Hmm. What do you suggest? Come on. We've got troops to rally. Going somewhere? Yeah, home. I can waste my time better there than here. Cannot let you do that. We have work to do. We? We did the work. It's you and Orson who can't decide if it's good enough. I know. And I'm sorry. Truly. Things haven't been running smoothly for a while. A while? Try since the beginning. When I started, I didn't smoke. Now I'm up to a pack a day. I can't remember a time where things ran well. But that's the point. If everything was perfect, then nothing would be extraordinary. Every week we pull off a miracle, and we wouldn't be able to do it without the efforts of everyone in this room. What about Orson? <laughs> I did say everyone in this room, right? Orson is under a lot of pressure right now, and we owe him a little patience, just like he owes it with us. A little patience. Fine. He owes us boatloads, but that won't happen. His ego won't let it, but that's all right. We're not here because of Orson Wells. We're here because we love to do what we do. I'm here for the paycheck, and that's all. And that's why you put up with our abuse, right? Exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Orson is trusting us to do an acetate rehearsal today, same as usual. But we don't have a script. But we can fake our way through it. I suppose. Paul, you know how to improvise, right? Of course. Annie, you remember most of the dialogue? Most? Maybe some. It'll do. And Aura? Yes. I trust you know what to do. Don't I always? We can show it to him tomorrow at the theater and discuss what we want to do from there. I'm proud of you. All of you, thank you for sticking together on this. Way to go, General. Please do not call me Custer. Orson left behind the first page. Then let's start recording. Aura, anything special? Just dialogue. Run with it. Annie, with me. Koch, play the mail. Can I? That way Koch can keep writing. Eh, no difference. Come on, if we want it pressed for tomorrow, I need to get down there by three. Annie, you ready? Ready. Aura, start recording, please. Sound is recording. Okay, settle. In three, two, one, action. See, without Orson, the ship sails itself. But when he's involved, we're tossed into the rocks. Which is where I'm sure we'll end up tomorrow, as we do every week, in his stuffy dressing room. Always what works best for Wells, not what works well for everyone. Watch out. Hey. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Would you kindly sit still? You're yawning over the interesting part. If it were truly interesting, would I be yawning? Finished yet? How can anyone expect me to be finished when I'm continuously interrupted? He's almost done. And Koch, come with me and let him finish in peace. 
and Orson, no falling asleep. I'll do my best. How is he liking it? Hard to say. He's barely focusing. I'd be surprised if he's getting any of it at all. How's Danton been faring? Uh, we'll be lucky if we can make it through previews without the wheels coming off. Is it true that someone broke their leg? Literally broke their leg? Would you hush? If he's distracted, then maybe he'll be light on notes. Ha! <laughs> I'd wager 50 cents that he wants us to scrap half of it. A dollar says all of it. Finished. Come in. So? Only one note. Is that so? Put it all in the garbage. All of it? Orson, don't be unreasonable. There's plenty of good work in there. Don't worry about our bet. I know it's rough, but we can shape it up a little. No, it's not about the shape of it. it it's the flavor. The meat of it. It's dry. It barely captured my attention, and I was forcing myself to listen to it. It just seems so unbelievable. Well, what do you want? You picked a book about aliens. Extraterrestrials. Extraterrestrials crashing into Earth. It's fantasy. Sorry I'm late. I was just catching up on the news cycle. Welcome to the party. It's getting rather cramped. Anything from the front? I've got family out there. Germany's still in Sudetenland, but they don't think it'll last long. Hitler's getting antsy, but France and Britain aren't going to mobilize in time to save Czechoslovakia if he heads for it. It's only a matter of time now. Don't say that, Howard. Not now, Koch. I'm just saying what we're all thinking. Every time the Nazis make a move, we get one step closer to war. Well, until Hitler lands in New York, there's not much we can do now, is there? Maybe we shouldn't be waiting for that to happen. Maybe we should bring the fight to them first. Hold on, there's an idea. You want to enlist? What? No, listen. This is the news. Um, you're not saying anything. Not me. Uh, Zorn! Zorn! What? Turn that up! I want you to close your eyes and listen. President Roosevelt has not made any public comment about a reply from the Fuhrer regarding the letter sent to Germany seeking peace. However, many members of the President's staff did warn that trouble could be on the horizon if an agreement isn't made. Made all the more urgent as German soldiers have marched their way into Sudetenland bringing with them fear and uncertainty as the world watches, waiting for war. This is the news. Zorn, thank you, that's enough. October 27th. Fear and uncertainty as the world watches, waiting for war. You see, the title is in there already. I'm not following. There were snippets you all did with a news reporter. Why not make it the whole damn thing? You want to make it a news story? That doesn't exactly make it less dry. It'll only be dry if it's artificial. We have to make it feel as real as possible. You want Walter Lippmann to play a part? Not exactly. But think about this. What did that information you just heard make you feel? Come on. You were just talking about it without a care. Scared. Good. Scared. Anxious. Angry. Perfect. What else? It made me worried. For everyone that was there. Experiencing it firsthand. Precisely. Oh, I get it. So, if we... Hang on. What if, not one news story, but a variety? We tell the story of the invasion in real time. Exactly. Every element of the invasion described by different broadcasters. We could do eyewitness interviews, throw to experts and, and characters from the book. And cut in with updates of an invading army on the move as they make their way from New York City to conquer planet Earth. I don't know. This is a pretty big departure from the script you handed to Taylor. But it's what we need. Koch, you said it yourself. The book is dry, and our approach even more so. But Hausman, if we try something different here... We can make an oasis in the desert. An oasis. Our audience is primed by listening to stories of dark and terribly real forces laying actual waste wherever they go. They are already invested. Let's take their real fear of impending war and make them scared of our false one and the world we create along with it. Can we at least have some music? I can't come up with the sounds to fill out an entire war. 
Of course, of course. We'll use the music to make it feel even more authentic. Won't people tuning in think it's real? Wouldn't that be something? If anyone tunes into a radio program and hears of Martians invading, and they think it's real, I believe they deserve to be duped for being so foolish. You know CBS is not going to approve of this. I didn't hear anyone here asking for permission, did you? But Orson, they got a script that they're going to approve. I just don't see that it's worth the trouble. The trouble? Of what, putting on a good show? If you don't want to do this, that's fine, tell me. But as far as I can see, we don't have anything worth even half the salt of this current idea. So I say we go for it. We? We. What now? I'm with them, Orson. Are we really going to do this? Or is it just something that you'll thank us for later when you're accepting your Academy Award? I'm with you on this. I promise. We'll stay up all night if we have to. But not here. I don't like to eat where I sleep. So let's go to work, everyone. And that German naval units were engaged with allied landing aircraft. Here is the 8 o'clock news Here. Today, Thursday. What's this? One dollar. Fair and square. I said don't worry. Uh, I'm a woman of my word. Just consider it proper woman-to-woman paycheck. All right, thanks. The Germans reported that Kaye and Dunkirk were being heavily bombarded. George, mind putting on something a bit more uplifting? Whether it's Nazis or Martians, I'm tired of hearing about war. Thank you for listening to The Martian Broadcast, an audio drama production brought to you by Pralia Productions, Soul Drifter Studios, and their affiliates. Directed by S. Christian Rowe. Written by S. Christian Rowe and Jordan Stidham. Starring Ari Stidham as Orson Welles, Keaton Talmadge as Ora Nichols, Jim Brannigan as John Houseman, Oscar Jordan as Davidson Taylor, Courtney Reese as Anne Froelich, Christopher Hodge as Howard Koch, and Rama Valori as Paul Stewart. Produced by Casey Hammonds, Daniel Patton, Jordan Stidham, and S. Christian Rowe. Music composition by J.D. O'Day. Sound editing by Jason Crow. Hi, everybody. It's Jordan Stidham and Christian Rowe, creators of The Martian Broadcast. We just want to say thank you so much for listening. Yep, that was episode three, and we're about halfway through the series now, so thank you so much for sticking by and listening. And we couldn't have done it without the help of some very, very generous patrons. Patrons like... Mirabilis Films. Stephanie O. Adrian Rabel, Rabble, Ribble, Rabble, uh, R. Adrian R., thank you so much, and thank you for allowing me to butcher your name. Kim Mason. Perry Eels. Kevin Clay. Richard Nevins. Taylor White. Elena London. Catherine Noel. Tanya Quadra. And Lindsay Throne. If you didn't hear your name, don't worry. Stay tuned. It's a coming. We really want to just thank you again for listening. If you liked this podcast, please subscribe to wherever you listen to podcasts so you can stay up to date on when we drop new episodes or content. You can also find us on social media, on our Instagram or our Twitter page, at Martian Broadcast, at M-A-R-T-I-A-N. B-R-D-C-S-T. Please also make sure to rate, share, and one more time, just thanks again for listening. Without you, none of this would be possible.